Echo Means Business Pro Networking Live event going on. Uh, this is an ongoing series designed for the green industry pro to help access global everything out there. So uh, we can connect, can share. Um, EMB has been out there for over six years. And our main goal is to let everybody, you know, help at each other out. So this is what we're going to do. And tonight's session will focus on the best practices. No, tonight we're going to we're going to work on curb appeal. <laughs> With Fence Armor, we have Al Martin and Stephanie Bate from Fence Armor Hi, here. We're gonna work and on uh, we're the premier online community for green industry out there. So, you know, if you need anything, come on out. So I'm going to go in. We got real great guests out here. James from Second Mile. We have Nicole, the landscape manicurist. And like I said, Fence Armor. So. We're going to go around the room and introduce each other. We're going to start out with uh, Al up there. So, Al, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your company, too. All right. Well, um, Al Martins, like it says on the screen, I, I assume our audience can see the big uh, orange banner. I'm guessing. Um, <laughs> fence armor. And uh, what it means to me, certainly, it's uh, my baby. You know how people say, you know what, I should have thought of that idea. I should have done it. Um, I hear that all the time. And I didn't want to be that guy who didn't do it. So I, I, I thought of the idea as my, I had three landscapers over the years, and each one of them did the exact same thing. They're, they pulled up with their truck, the vandals jumped out of their vehicles, armed with their weed whackers, and they tacked my fence at full velocity. 7,500 RPM filaments banging at my posts. It wasn't pretty. Um, I put up my next fence, $13,500 cedar fence, and the vandals did the exact same thing. <laughs> so I, I finally said, you know, they had a great name, that, that company. That's why I hired them. They were called Pain in the Grass. But they were also a, gla they were also a glass company, so it kind of played off the two and I, and I talked to the guy and I said is, is there really nothing you can do he said well not if you want your grass trim and I said well we'll figure something out and um, we figured something out uh, and that's how the the birth of fence armor was made um, so it was really out of need I, I built it for myself my uh, business partner and I we have an engineering company cam solutions that's all we do is engineering for manufacturing and uh, yeah, we built it. We tried different materials. We tried different things and steel was the way to go. Made in North America was the way to go. Uh, and it worked. And then we said, hold the phone. Everybody needs these. And then we took it to market. So that's, uh, that's Al Martins and Fence Armor in a very short sound bite. Nice, nice. Well, Stephanie, I know you work at Fence Armor because I've talked to you many a times. Yeah. So tell me about what you do for Fence Armor. Uh, Alex called me the social media girl. That's how he always introduces me to everybody. Um, basically, I run, you know, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. Uh, we had a filming day the other day. So um, basically, anything you see on social media or any comments, that's me. Um, yeah, I just like to chat with you guys. It's an awesome community. It's super fun. So that's definitely the best part about it. Cool, cool. I I enjoy everything you put out there. There's a lot of stuff that you put out there. And sometimes it makes me laugh. And I'm, I really enjoy that. So that's the thank goal. You. <laughs> oh, thank, <laughs> thank you. you. I mean, all the stuff that Al does too. I mean, <laughs> it's not yeah, I gotta too, so. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, we have some serious outtakes. Oh, I uh, bet. I some, bet. Of it, some of it doesn't go live, thank goodness. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got a filter. Yeah. Right. There's a little cut back, you know, not show everything, you know. So yeah. eventually you'll get the blooper reel out one year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blackmail. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> It'll have to be on a special channel, I think. Oh, yeah. Uh, 
I don't know those TikTok things. They keep pointing, point to the song, point to the song. Like, what the hell? What song? What are you? What are you talking about? Right, right. I, I guess I'm just too old to figure what. Yeah, I, I keep you young. <laughs> <laughs> keep anyway. him on his toes. That's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So James, tell me a little bit about yourself and your company. Uh, yeah, so I'm James Shields with the uh, Second Mile Servants Landscaping and Lawn Care out of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, locally owned and operated here in town, and uh, I've been doing this full time, I guess, for the last six years, and uh, been doing it part time, fifteen, so quite a quite a bit of time in the industry. And uh, before that, I worked at Chick Fil A, so a lot of guys know that I was a uh, manager there at Chick Fil A. Worked there for for ten years almost, so very wow. long time. So uh, it's kind of kind of my, uh, I guess, friendly nature and all that stuff. And I, I still catch myself saying my pleasure every now and again. You know, they say that Chick-fil-A. So, um, but yeah, that's it. And we do, uh, you know, we do a lot of work here in Nashville and the surrounding areas around Nashville. So uh, any kind of landscaping, lawn care needs. So that's me in a nutshell. Nice. Oh, nice. Thank you. Thank you for being on, James. Definitely. Nicole, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name's Nicole. I own the Landscape Manicurist. Um, I don't use weed eaters to... <laughs> <laughs> it's just a little nail file, do you? Rototiller, maybe, or something. But uh, I've been doing this since about 2013. I've always kind of done a little bit of landscaping or, uh, you know, off and on at my home. But as far as the business is concerned, probably 2013. And uh, that's about it. <laughs> Well, thank you for being on, Nicole. I am Scott, Landscapes by Acme. Uh, some of you know me by my hair. Um, it is dyed green, and it's not because of the GIE coming up. It's just because my soccer team won a, a game, and I was proud to, you know, support our colors. So, But we are here to talk about curb appeal. So I got lots of questions, and then later on we have a giveaway going on. Uh, thanks to Fence Armor. They provide a good amount of money for some shirts to get done up and we'll have a winner. And uh, who knows? I mean, hopefully we had a lot of entries as, as far as I know. And, you know, who knows can win. You never know. So my main thing is, is we're going to go right off the bat. We're going to go with why is it important for curb appeal? I mean, why? what is the main reason why – curbs are so appealing. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I really don't get it. I mean, so many people keep saying that curbs are appealing, but I mean, I more look at the the lawn, the fence, the landscaping, the irrigation, all, all that together. But um, what, what makes it, you guys think what makes the, you know, the house stand out pretty much the good curb appeal. Let's let's start out with James. Go ahead, James. Tell me what you think would be the perfect curve appeal to please people. Um, I, it's it's hard, and I think it varies on your area, right? But I know for Nashville, uh, you know, with all the building and all that kind of stuff that's going on here now, we are growing like crazy, and uh, we're talking 150 people a day move here, which is insane. Um, and it's become just a, a great place to be, a great place to live, and. Uh, a lot of landscaping is, I mean, it's just a great time to do that. And uh, curb appeal is extremely important. I, I personally, that's what I preach when I do any kind of landscaping job. Like, I'm like, yeah, your inside of your house is worth $600,000, but what does the outside look like? You know, because that's the right. first thing somebody's going to see visually when they pull up. They're not going to go, oh, I can't wait to see that kitchen. They're going to pull up and they're going to go, oh, my gosh, this is the yard, you know, or look at the flower beds. I and people will say they don't, but genuinely, like it is a big deal. And uh, all my customers, they're they that's the first thing they tell me. Uh, I got a realtor I do a lot of work for here in town, love her to death, super sweet lady. Uh, she owns she's in she's from Florida originally, and uh, she does a lot of stuff here in Nashville. And she cracks me up because she'll have these huge budgets I'm talking, you know, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars to flip a little house, and then she'll give me a budget for the landscape and thousand dollars, fifteen hundred dollars. And I'm just like I'm like Miss Barbara, like, you know, up it a little bit, you know, like I can make it right. look good, but with this it's gonna be very basic, you know. And uh right. so I'm a I'm a huge proponent of curb appeal, man. I really 
uh, you know, it's welcoming, it's inviting. I, I think that's a huge deal for me, uh, any kind of house I, I work at and in my own personal house. So it's uh, extremely important, man. That's the first thing I notice. I'm not going to notice. I, I don't care anything about your house. I think it may be just being the trade too, but the first thing right. I notice, I has got some nice plants. Dang, look at them flower bed edges. Like, I, I noticed <laughs> stuff like that. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, you got to, I, you know, I look for everything when I first pull up to a yard, you know, especially doing an estimate, I'm looking for, you know, pretty much the landscaping. Is it overgrown? Is it, you know, is, could it be missing something in the mulch? You know, I want, I want that house to stand out and, you know, so a couple of years back too, I didn't look at the fences, but now I look at the fences, you know, and, you know, I look for that, that little mark on the, on the bottom of the fence to say, Hey, this could be changed out, you know, and that's, you know, I've, I mean, Al's the one that turned me on to that. So, I mean, that, I'm, I'm thankful for him. And, you know, that's definitely something that I wouldn't have thought of before. And, you know, people think about that stuff now. You know, I've, I've had a lot of customers talk about, you know, we put fence armor around their, their mailboxes. And that's, you know, not people, not many people think about that. So, you know, uh, Nicole, what do you think about curb appeal? Tell me about your thoughts. Well, curb appeal is, you know, kind of my bread and butter, I guess. I mean, as soon as I look at a house, um, if it if it doesn't have what it needs, which would be symmetry and, you know, stuff like that. It, it, in my brain, I know because I did a little research, so I could sound so smart today. Uh, okay. You know, it adds about five to 11 percent uh, more value to the home if you have better curb appeal. Hey, do I get five points for that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, now thanks no but i think in general like when i'm doing a bid for somebody um you know i'm there to solve a problem and so if they don't have the curb appeal but i go outside of that where i hire subs to do you know replace the six shingles that are standing out like a sore thumb or you know come in and take care of the guttering i i take care of that as well so as far as curb appeal if i can stand at the curb and it's not appealing then obviously i'm going to take care of that right right <laughs> Well, that's good. I mean, that's what you want to do. So, Al, I mean, I know you're up up in Canada. So, I mean, what's your perfect curb appeal when you? Uh, what's your house look like? I mean, is it stand out? I'm assuming so. I mean, Stephanie's shaking her head. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, you know, it, it's it's interesting because both Jay and Nicole, you you both touched on something. I think Jay, you said it's the first impression. And, right. and Nicole, it, you're absolutely right. If it looks good from the curb, then there's hope. Um, you know, I spent, uh, I've lived in different parts of the earth. Um, but my last seven years I spent in Ventura County in, in California. And, you know, my community was, uh, was an HOA like many of them are. And it was truly like, anybody ever watched the Truman Show, that movie? Yeah. It was exactly like that. Nice. I mean, it was beautiful. Every morning it was like little angels came and everything was clean and perfect and magnificent uh, white picket fences. And that's where I learned about curb appeal. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, you, you, your curb was literally painted red for the areas you couldn't park in. And then your house number was painted in white and the, so that the, the firemen could see your house number on the curb so they wouldn't have to hunt for it, in, you know, on your on your home. Um. But yeah, that that's where I, I got a real feeling for for curb appeal. And of course, you know, stepping back to to my dad, he was a big fan of roses, and we always had roses running along the, the the entire side of the home, and that represented about eighty five feet worth of roses. And you you only know it's that bad when you roll into them. Yeah, they 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 really hurt. <laughs> right. Um. So yes, currently I happen to be living in in Canada and. Because of the way the, the world started to rotate in the opposite direction, um, I'm kind of stuck here for a little bit um, <laughs> until things get get reoriented. Um, but to, to all of that, it doesn't always take a lot to change a curb appeal. And I, I think everybody knows what curb appeal, certainly, if anybody goes out uh, to meet somebody or go out on a date, they're always trying to look good theoretically. Uh, you know, they want to dress up and... The outside at least appears good. The inside may be a shack, but um, I like to think that uh, I do a good job in my yard because ultimately I'm my own landscaper now because of 
firing three of them. Um, I've decided to do my own and uh, the grass has to look good because we get people who drive by all the time to look at the fences and you don't, you know, I don't want to be that shoemaker, right? What do they say about the shoemaker? He's the only guy with the rotten shoes or the mechanic. He's the guy who's, whose car doesn't run right. Something like something along those terms. Um, well, your property is a, it, it makes people stop because he has the patriotic edition right at the end on his mailbox and already in Canada, that's going to make somebody stop because <laughs> <laughs> Why is the American flag there? Right. Yeah, I didn't put up the Trump 2024 sign yet, but you know, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that, that might be a little strange up here. Yeah, yeah, probably. Um, but I do have a mailbox post, and I, I certainly took back my traditions from California, uh, the good ones. That's good. Uh, but certainly, uh, I think curb appeal, I mean, is, is some simple things, right? If you've got a concrete driveway or sidewalk and they're full of uh, mold and dirt, get them pressure washed. If right. your your, your uh, east trough or whatever need to be clean. And of course, obviously the fence line, right? If the fence line looks ratty, your mailbox looks ratty. Uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can do. Some landscapers will say, we'll put a bar garden bed along here, but garden beds cost a lot of money and it's a lot of work. Right. Um, and if you're a real estate agent and you've got a, a fence that's a bit of an eyesore, like a white picket fence, and it's all chewed up, then it's nice just, you know, you could get white fence armor there. And immediately, suddenly, you've got a beautiful fence line again. So obviously, that's spinning it on, on that side of things. So it, it's a quick way as far as landscapers to make, uh, let's say, a, a little more revenue if they can say, you know, Mr. Customer, not only am I doing your grass and I'm doing your shrubs, um, let us clean up your fence line. Let us change up your mailbox post. Let us do those types of things, I think, that will generate more revenue for you and, of course, elevate your business to the customer. Correct. Correct. Definitely. I mean, I, you all had great points. Uh, definitely. I mean, definitely any part of the lawn is, you know, needs, you know, addressing, especially... Like Al said, I, you know, you want to dress up, to go out to a date. So why not dress up your yard and, and make that, you know, I've seen a lot this year, um, not even in the front. I've seen a lot of customers that want to spend more time outside. So they want that, that curb appeal out in the backyard too. Um, we've done a lot of new landscape projects out in the backyard just so that way when they bring over Joe and, and Tammy for their party, they can say, Hey, look at this backyard look how beautiful my backyard is. I mean, they, they want that front to look good too, but they want that back to look 10 times more amazing. So that way they can up one to the neighbors, you know? So that's definitely a good point is your curb appeal can be all around the house. Definitely. Um, so Al, I got this question for you. Okay. I know your, your products protect fences. So how does post protection play a role in creating the professional curb appeal? Well, I mean, obviously there's a couple of things. Right. And it depends on which angle you bring it from, right? So right. If, if you are a landscaper who's been a landscaper at a, at a home for years and potentially you've realized what I was speaking about, you can say, you know what, hey, there's this brand new technology, just came aware of it, and I'm going to take care of that curb appeal along that fence line because that fence line is looking a little shaggy. And now you're going to look like a hero because immediately, I mean, the cost is nominal. Um, and there's a couple of things, right? When, when you're installing fence armor, the easy thing would be just to put it on. But if you want right. to do it right, where the wounded area is in the wood, then you'd want to seal that, potentially paint it or, or seal it, and then put on the fence armor, because obviously if that wound still exists, water will get behind and get down into the post. The wood gets wet, the water gets down into the concrete, and then it starts to crack the concrete and then the water comes up, and then before you know it, you've got a, a, a pretty rotten post. So at that curb appeal immediately could be, hey, Mr. Customer, I've got this great new technology that I'm going to make your white picket fence look beautiful again. Right. Um, or it could be the other way around. 
hey, look what the last landscaper did to your yard. <laughs> I've got this great curb appeal idea and we're going throughout the neighborhood installing this product that's going to make those fences look beautiful. We're going to update your mailbox post. And it could be, you know, really, to be fair, our probably our largest customer pay, base that cares about curb appeal or HOAs. And if any of you are doing lawn maintenance for them, it's you don't even have to sell it. They just get it. And they'll say, yes, please update our curb appeal. And it's it's just a nominal way to do that. So I have a question. So when I, I'm not real familiar, I did a little bit of research on the products. Um, yeah. So when you wrap a mailbox, per se, like the little post, it, and you have a sprinkler right there and maybe the water's you know hitting it all the time how tell me how that works exactly like as far as the water not perme like getting through and, and running down your your product into the ground and, and maybe rotting that out and, you know what i'm saying like does it yeah. no that's that's a that's a fair water tight water tight seal is that the correct <laughs> verbiage i guess oh he's getting he's going to get a product oh he's, he's getting a hand here you go everybody hey you know what <laughs> Live on YouTube, people. Oh, I love it. Demonstration. Here's the board, and here are the colors. Wait, how many colors? <laughs> we got a lot of colors. This is oh, a, a, a color awesome. that an HOA wanted, so we customized that color. But ultimately, behind here, it's galvanized steel. Right. Right. So it's 100% American galvanized steel. We use nothing from China. Um, everything is Canadian or American. And then we powder coat it. So sometimes people will just want the galv look and it'll look just fine. Uh, if you've got a, a pressure treated fence, it, it's going to turn gray anyway. So the galv will be just fine. But everything starts as galv and then we, we powder coat them. So when that sits on the post, there's a couple of things to your point, which is an interesting question that you would ask them because not a lot of people have that forethought. So one is you don't put the fence armor on the ground. Because there is a competitive product that actually has no fasteners. It just lays on the ground. And that's a problem because if it's laying on the ground, you have capillary action that's drawing water up. The other right. thing is if it's laying on the ground, you're protecting nothing. Because yeah. you're cutting typically grass at two and a half to three inches high. So why waste, you know, two inches of it down here when you could have it up here where the weed whacker is, right? And if, if anybody has ever had kids or boys, you know, when my kids were little, how did we teach them how to pee? You put Cheerios in the toilet bowl. Why did we put Cheerios in the toilet bowl? Because they were to aim for the damn Cheerios and not the floor. So if you put the fence armor where it belongs, it tells the landscaper, hey, this is what I got to hit. I, I got to hit this thing. And, and they get it all the time. Otherwise, their weed whacker is down here killing the grass, trying to make sure they don't have to trim it next week. Right. Um, but if you're, you're cutting it right here, so to your point, if the wood is wounded in here, you have to seal it. Otherwise, there'll still be water getting in. Then you would put the fence armor on, and now that'll be there for, I don't know, a lifetime, 10, 20 years. So sorry, Scott, but as you put that into the post and you're, you're drilling into it, so do you recommend that you seal where it's been screwed into the post then? Or I'm just curious as to how that no, works. The, <laughs> no, the, th the thread is self-sealing, right? So once okay. you <clears throat> thread it in, you'll be fine. <clears throat> so you, you won't have a, an area there to, to worry about. It doesn't rot there. Um, the screws, again, we use are, we use Pittsburgh steel. Um, I, I used to have a screw on my desk, but. Um, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Yes, there is probably more. is somewhere. <clears throat> We're an engineering company, damn it. Um, <laughs> those screws aren't just any screws. You don't buy these at Canadian Tire or, or Home <laughs> Depot or Lowe's. These screws have a, a, a drill bit at the front of them. So we pre-drill. And the reason why we have a, a pre-drill is for vinyl or composite fences. If you have a vinyl or composite fence, you can't just screw into it without creating a burr and pulling. Mm -hmm. So what you would normally do is drill and then screw. And now with our screw, you can just, it pre-screws and then you can tap it in and you're ready to go. So to your point, it'll seal and you won't have to worry about it. Yeah. 
you're, you're not going to have water coming in through through that point. Thank you. Sorry. Oh, you're welcome. No, it was a you're very fine. good question. You're Maybe fine. I Nicole. took too long to answer it, but hopefully I, I covered the points that were necessary. Scott, could I ask, say something? Sure, go ahead. Uh, Al, have you ever, I'm sure you probably have, uh, you seem pretty ingenious with, with the idea of this. I, have you thought of doing uh, like one for, for low siding or like fascia boards, some kind of armor, I guess? Uh, yes, he just hang on. He's got more. He's got more supplies in there. Just no, wait. The only just wait. Ask. You ask like him. Oh, there's more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why, Jay? It's <laughs> funny you should ask that question. It was almost like this yes. was scripted or something. Yeah. <laughs> hey, is this? Is this? Did we plan this? this is no, I, I didn't. But did we it's interesting you asked. Maybe because, we did. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> we have what's called a demi version, and we have a demi version for a couple of different reasons. Privacy fences, typical five by five white vinyl privacy fences. That bottom that, rail sits right here, right? Yep. Exactly. So you, yep. You're, you're not going to get a, a whole piece of fence armor in there, right? So we created the shallow depth. So this shallow depth version did three things for us. One, it solved that problem. And you'll notice, of course, on all of fence armor, there's a radius here. Uh, that radius is there for a reason, obviously beyond strength it gives the filament an opportunity to deflect so it doesn't break the landscaper's filament. We don't want to damage your filament as it's going by. And by deflecting, it deflects off the face so it doesn't damage or mar the face. So anyway, when you use two of them, you create a corner. Mm. So Perfect. Perfect. Man. So He's thought of everything. Incredible. This guy's a genius. No, no, yeah. just, you know, you just think about it enough. You stare at a post long enough, you'd think of exactly the same thing. Uh, <laughs> have a, have He's learning to pee as a little kid, remember? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. like Cheerios all throughout the house, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like the, the rings on Sonic going through, just going yeah. through. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> so for vinyl siding, we have a lot of uh, pressure washers who use our product. Um, because they'll pressure off the vinyl siding and then they'll put this in the corner because it's all chewed up. And what will happen is if you have physically holes in that, you put a one by behind it and then you okay. fasten into the one by and now you've fixed the hole that was there. Nice. And, and that's the same thing with vinyl fences. You know, a vinyl fence can get chewed up from a lawnmower deck or whatever and you got a big hole in it. Yeah. Well, you just use fence armor, put a, a, a one by or a two by behind it. And then you fasten and stack it so that it closes up that hole. And now you're all covered up and you didn't have to replace the post. That's huh. nice. That is very Real nice. easy way. Of course, it'll be white typically, obviously. Right. Um, and you, you, you've healed the damage. It's solid. Looks beautiful. Nobody will notice it. Um, we did a lot of those, for instance, at Richard Petty's garage in, in uh, North Carolina. Uh, he, had a, he has a huge, huge fence. And lawnmower deck damage cracks everywhere because, you know, it gets cold at night. In the morning, they get in and they cut the lawn. And as soon as you hit that cold PVC, it <laughs> turns into glass. Right. Um, so rather than pull out those posts and do the rest of it, we just cladded the, the faces and we're all good. But wait. See? I have one more question. He's got yes. more. He's got so more speaking answers. of dogs peeing on the post and everything, um, so what is that like? Like if a dog is going to urinate on the little piece, it's metal, correct? I mean, or galvanized, what did you say? What's galvanized. It? Yeah, it's galvanized, galvanized. G90 galvanized. Okay, so it, it's not going to rust or, or show any. Okay, so I saw a question in here in the uh, little comments about the water and, and, and how that might affect it discoloration or something we, we've got pictures of fence armor uh at least 15 years old already um we started playing with this back in 2008 um and you know the, the galvanized steel that we use is, is strong enough it will it will weather it will turn more gray from what it used to be nice and shiny but it will still be it won't rust um so it will look great. The, the powder coat is what's interesting. 
people worry, is the powder coat going to come off? And in the, we say in, in Florida, or let's say the southern states, uh, you, it'll go for at least 10 years without a chipping. And if it chips, then you still have galvanized steel underneath it. Um, and in the northern climates, it's going to be at least 20 years because you're only cutting the grass half the time. Mm -hmm. And we randomly select uh, fence armor. We put it on a, we actually put a weed whacker on a bicycle, uh, uh, what do you call that? A bicycle rack? Not a rack. You know, when you fix a bike, what's that thing called? A bicycle tray? Anyway, you hang the bike on the damn thing. Instead of hanging a bike, you 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 put on a weed whacker, lock it in in power, and beat it for forty five minutes. And that would be we we calculate that to be equivalent to to twenty years worth of damage. Wow. And uh, yeah, they come out looking great. So we, and again, the powder we use too happens to be American as well. So this particular one is actually an Italian process called the Coral. And it actually creates a textured um, grain on the galvanized steel. So it's our most premium product. And for those people who've got cedar and, and our composites that want to look great all the time, that's the one to get. Do you, Al, do you want to talk about the ornamental? Because there was a comment about um, ones that don't require drilling. Yeah. Let's hear about that. He's going to get more products. Hang on. You done up. You done messed up. Let's see it out. There we go. We're going okay, out. So, so for the ornamental or metal fences, not sure if you can see that very well, but can you see the the dimples? Yeah. And the slot? Yep. So that those dimples and slot marry up like that and clip on to the metal fence. So there's <laughs> physically no fasteners that you need. Oh, we don't cool. want to avoid that that warranty on an aluminum fence. So I think in, in Raleigh, North Carolina, the whole um, whole city for all the cemeteries with the wrought iron fences, they use fence armor in every one of them. Because every year they used to hire students to paint the bottoms of them black because of obviously the weed whacker damage. Right. So now they just wow. clip these on and they don't have to worry about that. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> See, I think this guy's thought of everything. I mean, science, yes, you have. Come there's, on, there's always new products. <laughs> yes, there's always new things, but and and there's always, you know, we we've had people, you know, of course for play centers, we've designed specifically uh, for Home Depot the what's it called the Gorilla Series Chateau playset, you know, with the rock wall, and so you can use fence armor on all those play sets just cant them at an angle and of course they they fit sideways too so you can get that angle that you need so that'll that'll work on the legs um and we we get customers ask for that all the time but we built a special rock wall addition at an angle so that it sits on that so when you're weed whacking it doesn't damage that type of thing now Scott, sorry yeah how uh, I'm sure some people probably know this, but I, I've never sold this to a customer or explained this to a customer. What, what would be pricing to suggest fence armor and installing it for them? What what would that look like as far as, uh, you know, labor involved and that kind of stuff? Like, how would I go about that? Because I've got like eight customers I'm, I'm thinking of right now. I'm like, man, I'm about to fence armor this up, buddy. Like, oh, that's incredible, man. Very cool. Well, yeah, I mean, certainly you can go to our website, Jay, and, you know, it's visible to everybody. Okay. Um, and you can see the prices there. Of course, as a contractor, uh, you're buying in volume, so your your prices will certainly be a little more attractive. Um, and as regards, you know, what do you charge to install them? You know, we, we've, we've seen the gambit, really. We have some landscapers who just say, it's part of my contract with you. I'm going to put on fence armor because we don't do any property that we're going to damage. And wow. here it goes because I mean, it's the price is attractive enough that you can put on the fence armor. I mean, if you wanted to, I suppose if you lost the contract, you could take them back off. I don't know the, the rules in every municipality, but you could just come in with it say, Hey, you've got 35 posts and you only need what's nice about fence armor is 
you you only need to put it on one side if you want to because if you know especially down in in texas you got a lot of privacy fences what they call uh they're called um neighbor friendly neighbor friendly fences yeah. right? so all the posts are on one side and all the pickets are on the other side mm -hmm. so you can only get to one side of the post and this is the perfect solution right you you get all three sides protected and if this side is a, as a garden bed you don't need a piece of fence armor there so in other words if you were doing a property and you only needed to protect one side because the other side is the neighbor you could just use one piece of fence armor and now you know that throughout your season and obviously landscaper is the same as us the same as everybody i think in north america and probably the world today is hard to find labor yeah. right and the hardest thing to teach them is how to use all the equipment and i know the the young guys like to hear that weed whacker sound and uh now you don't have to worry about it because when this is on there, they can weed whack all damn day and it sounds great and they're not damaging it. Um, so you can get a new guy and they can fly through the job without you having to worry about getting that phone call. Hey, what happened to my, what happened to my fence? You know? Um, so ultimately to your point, if it was a brand new fence and you were putting on fence armor, you could probably charge two to $5 a post to put it on because it literally takes, moments uh <laughs> okay i mean two, min two minutes at the most i mean put it put a screw on the front if you're doing you know four sides you can use four screws or you can use two it depends on the situation right okay. and, and if you notice there you see how there's a slot and a hole on the other i'm not real good with this mirror image thing <laughs> <laughs> you see the slot it's and right the hole it's all right now it's all right that slot and that hole <laughs> Um, are there so that the the screw is not pulled out? What? Okay, oh. we're going down a path here. Yes, I think we're going the wrong way, Al. But we we can kind of understand what you're saying. Well, yeah. If, if you don't I'm have sorry. the if you don't have the slot, that this the screw is going to pull with the expansion of the wood when it swells. Right. Right. Or if the vinyl gets hot, the the, the vinyl will expand, and you need to to leave that space for compression decompression on the component right yep did i answer the question uh, yeah, yeah i yeah, think yeah. you did uh, okay so add? two to five bucks and then if you if you had to do repair like i said if there was physically wounded material if it was a, a aluminum fence you would spray paint it black then put on the clip yeah. it on our unit if it was a wood fence you would seal it so then you could charge to 10 to 15 dollars a post because you're literally you know, fixing the uh, substrate before you put on the, the fence armor. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's a good question, though. Jay, can I add one thing? Definitely, Jay, it's it's literally you can do probably, I've done it for a couple of customers, and you can do probably about 10 in probably an hour. Wow. I mean, you can, you can go through it real quick. Um, so it's literally, I mean, I charge my customers – pretty much 10 bucks extra plus the, the product. So, I mean, it, it's real quick to do. Um, when we do new installs of, we do a lot of split rail here. So we use ales uh, from Fence Armor. We use the post saver sleeves and literally that we charge 15 bucks for each sleeve to put on. And it's, you know, if, you know, if they didn't want to add it onto it, we can add it onto it, but we do recommend that because literally it's going to add 20 years to the fence. And that's something that's going to, you know, lengthen your your fence because you're putting it in. You're, you know, you're protecting it all together. You know, even with the fence armors, the metal, that's going to lengthen that fence 100 times longer than anywhere else. So it's definitely worth the, an upsell to the customer. So can I tell you a story about me repairing a fence before I knew anything about fence armor? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the. This lady's fence, the post was, I mean, like you could push it, you know what I mean? It was, whoa, you know. So my solution, right, you know, I like took a took two by fours, pressure treated, cut them at a V, right, and then staked them in the ground and then lagged it to the post. So basically scabbed it together, you know. But I did it all the way around just so it would beef it up because she didn't want a new post, you know. Right. And like. I'm like, dude, we could have just used fence armor. I'm just shaking my head. Of course, this was seven, right. eight years ago now, but I'm like, that was a good idea at the time. You know, I thought, oh, right. you yeah. know, the, the fence is still there, but 
it's just like you know that like it's just from weed eating it over and over and over and so that's that's really cool to know man i i honestly uh, i've heard about you guys i d- didn't know too much about it to be honest and uh, i'm i'm extremely impressed i think that's a very good upsell and i think that's a uh, any like scott was saying install new stuff man just just go ahead and hit them with that because that's gonna protect it for a long time so that, that's the way to go so right, very nice right. cool. appreciate right. that man no. Thank you. Don't do like me. Don't don't do that. <laughs> no. 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 And uh, leading on that, if you are part of the EMB, you are signed up. If you're a pro, you can go on over to the Pro Rewards. And Al has a code up there for fence armor. So you can order fence armor and you get a discount if you're a pro member of Rewards. So nope. definitely, if not, sign up today. Um Go over to echomeansbusiness.com and sign up today and try to save some money. There's tons of rewards out there. So, and Fence Armor is one of them. And thank you guys for being a partner of that and being on here also. Um, so next, let's go to another question. If we, unless we got more things from Al. I mean, Al's got probably tons of things over there that he could show us. Well, I was just, I was, <laughs> there's a whole plethora of things down here. Um, I was just going to say, you know, obviously there are tens and tens of thousands of landscapers in North America alone. Right. Um, even if, if you have your doubts about the product, or even if you say, you know what, I just cut lawns. I don't want to do anything else. Um, what you can do, you know, is even have a, a sample or two with you, a fence armor, right? Cause we have two, two sizes, right? So let's, uh, Let's say this is the the, the, the the white five by five vinyl, right? So you have a vinyl fence. I went to get another prop. I, I, I think Apple keeps telling me to stand up. So yeah. <laughs> I think it's awesome, by the way. We're laughing, but we, I mean, I think it's, that's awesome. It's, it's Sorry. perfect. It, he's I mean, prepared. I'm not. I don't have anything. Yeah. <laughs> I got, I got notes over here for curb appeal. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, wh- where I'm going with this is even if, if you don't believe in it, you don't do whatever. You carry a sample with you and you can share it with your customer and say, hey, Mr. Customer, obviously you're seeing damage on your post or on your thing. And it, it just shows that you're enlightened, right? Um, we do. You can say I, I, we have a solution. It's called Fence Armor. We can put it on your post or, or, or mailbox post or sign post, whatever. But at least you've presented it. And if the customer says, no, we're not interested. We don't, don't really want to spend that extra whatever, 100 bucks to, to do it. Um, then you're indemnified. Now you could weed whack away and they can't come back to you and say, Hey, you damaged my, well, we told you we would damage that damn post. Um, and we offered you a solution. So Mm. you see where I'm going with this. You, you, you brought it up and now you planted the seed. Now they're going to start looking at the bottom of those posts a little more intently. And they'll say, you know what, maybe we should take them up on that. It wasn't a big deal. Um, and if they realize the cost of what it takes to replace a post, in, in most areas, a minimum is two to three hundred dollars. And in many places, it's over five hundred dollars. You got to take yeah. out that post. You got to take out that concrete. And now you've got the strange looking brand new post with all the other old posts. Yeah. Um, so it's really a, for the replacement of one post, you've covered all the fence armor they'll need for that entire property. Mm-hmm. Most in most homes. Okay. So I think that was a, that's a point that even the naysayers and the guys, nah, I don't need it. I don't want to do it. It still covers them from getting that question mark, especially those guys who are doing HOAs. They're always on you uh, about stuff like that. And it's, it's the gutters, uh, you know, people will use a fence armor on a gutter because the gutters get all, yeah. all chewed up. The corners get chewed up. Uh, the sheds get chewed up. And now you've got something that's easy to do and, and make it look good. Yeah, I go. think on commercial properties, though, I think it'd be a great idea to just like provide two or three, you know, especially because you guys are just zipping through there. I mean, I'm not, I don't mow yards, but they're zipping through, the crew's zipping through. You got a brand new kid that's, you know, $5 an hour. Okay, 10, but there's <laughs> two and they're, they're killing the post, you know? Cute. So I think if you put two or three on there, but what is the benefit for somebody like me where I can't necessarily get wholesale per se, 
Is it that I am charging per hour to put it on there? I mean, besides the benefit for the customer, what's the benefit for me as a business owner? Am I able to get a, a reduced cost? Because normally the upcharge is 50, 50% retail to wholesale, you know, type thing. So is it per hour? I mean, like, where is my benefit for money to be made, I guess? Well, I mean, like uh, Scott said earlier, certainly if you go to the pro uh, area, there's a pretty substantial discount there. So you get a discount on the product. So they're looking at the price on the website and it's whatever, $15 and your price is something less than that. So you made that profit and then you've made the profit of whatever you want to charge them to install it. But I think more importantly, and I, I think the point that many fail to realize it's not even the installation of the product. It's not the product itself. It's that you have brought to the customer attention that you actually care about their property. You're not just a lowly landscaper. You're a landscaper with the means and with the technical prowess to be able to say, hey, we've got the latest and greatest technology here that no other landscaper is talking to you about. So, like I said, even if they say no, they say, holy shit, she knows her stuff. Um, so that's that's really, I think, the most important thing. It elevates you amongst the rest of the ranks. And then, of course, you can make some money with it. Does that make sense? Awesome. Thank thank you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Definitely. Um, you know, every little bit helps out, especially when it comes to fences and, and tons of curb appeal. You know, it does go a long way, like JC said. Um, just the smallest thing can make a big difference in a, a yard or landscaping. Um one question I got for pretty much, well, James and Nicole, maybe Al can answer this or maybe Stephanie, I don't know. Uh, customers tend to like when aspects of the job are custom or personalized of their needs. Are there any suggestions that you guys can add to make it custom or a special flair? I think Al can by adding the post, you know, his, you know, flag on his post or, or anything like that. But what about you, Jay? Um, or Nicole, what do you guys got for me? Something that could go ahead, Nicole. You you smile a little. <laughs> I'm always smiling. Sorry. So um, I think that when I walk onto a property, or actually, it, it, it actually starts with a phone call. So when that client calls, I'm like, okay, so where are we going? Like, are you you know, especially with carpet bill, like if if I've been recommended or whatever, I'm like, okay, who's recommended you? And then it goes on to what are you needing done? And they'll tell me that. And then I go on to into other areas in their yard. So have you had anybody working on your property previously? Do you have a lawn mowing guy? Do you have a sprinkler guy? And so I'm able to cover all of those issues that they may have. Now I'm going to ask if they have the you know protection around their post. But anyway, so I think that as far as like me coming into a property, I'm looking at the overall you know, aspect of the curb appeal. And I'm able to address each one of those because I have subcontractors in my phone and I'm going to say, okay, I'll be the general contract. I'll be the contractor over this. And then I come down and I filter through going and subcontracting all of these guys out to take care of issues. Now, when it comes to trimming bushes or shrubs and, and the overall design of it, I do that. Now I do also have a land or oh gosh she's a, a lady that does designs and so again i'll subcontract her out if i need to so i think when it comes to a client calling me i, I address all of those things on the phone so when i finally get on the property because they've taught they've thought about those things for about two days because i'm going to go do their bid now and they're like oh my gosh i didn't even think about all the rest of the problems in my on my property and then i go Okay, so here's here's where we're at. You just wanted to you wanted me to do your landscaping, but then they're giving me the checklist of, well, you know, do you got a guy that can address this or or my gutters or my <laughs> mailbox post? I'm there to do that for them. So I think as far as that goes, I I will connect with every bit of of the entire property from curb 
to house. And actually I do have, you know, a bathroom remodel right now. So I'm over that as well. <laughs> if you've got good contractors that you can go ahead and just oversee their projects, you know, I've got them. And I think it's amazing because you are able to upsell that and you can add a 10 or 20% upcharge to their initial bid. So. Definitely. Definitely. Well, that is great. I mean, <clears throat> that is nice that you have that in your back pocket as it were, because it, it's a one-stop shop, right? Yeah, it is. It, it actually is. Because I want them to understand that if it's five years down the line, I'm still maintaining their property. I'm coming in, you know, biweekly to remove weeds because that's what I offer. And then, you know, every two to three months, I'm going to go in there and trim their shrubs. If I need to go ahead and, and install a sidewalk, I can do that because I have the concrete guy to do that. Or I can come in and hand set bricks and stones and stuff like that. Yeah, you could have your pressure washer guy. <laughs> and are you the pressure washer guy? I am the pressure washer guy. <laughs> okay. So, so I do yeah. offer that as well. So I think that, that I yeah. think that in saying that though, when there is a, just a, cause I'm a single just person. So there's people that come up behind me and clean up my debris, but as far as stones, pressure washing and stuff like that, I have the sub, you know, I'm doing that part, but I've got the sub going and doing the weed removal. And I think that some of these people that I know they're sitting here in the uh, chat that could just have those subs that are sitting there and you don't even have to touch the property, but you're over it, making money off of those people that have the ability to do that. Well, you, you come with the credibility, right? They hired you to do their curb appeal and yes. now they, they've come to trust you, Nicole, and they ask you. And, and when you go to them and say, you know, Mr. Customer, it's probably time maybe to stay in your fence. You might want to consider that. 100%. And by yeah. the way, I got somebody for you. And obviously they, they've got to be top notch because your name is, is at play here, right? Notch, yeah. so, I would be staying in the fence too. Sorry. Oh, you'd be staying in the fence too? <laughs> hey, that's fine. <laughs> hey, why not? You know, a perfectionist, I guess. But if I had somebody that could come behind me and just back brush, that'd be great. I, I'd be okay with that. But, you know, there's a classic situation. You just stain the fence and the first thing you do is weed whack it, you know. You're gonna you're gonna put something. That'd be on the it. lawn guys that I subbed out. <laughs> so be, when you do the stain, you're gonna, protect, you're gonna protect the posts. Correct. No, I agree with that a thousand percent. I think it's a, I think it's a great upsell. Just like me going into either Lowe's or Home Depot to go ahead and get their, you know, their edging, but I can also upsell that to where I can go and get, you know, um, oil rubbed bronze, and I can charge thirty five dollars a stick instead of. 1099. So there is an upsell. And I think there's certain clients that are great with that. But I think there's certain clients that are okay with you just going, I'm going to front the cost of, you know, the post armor fence. And I'm going to, I'm going to go in here, fence armor, sorry. And I'm going to yeah. do this for you because I know that this is going to compromise your mailbox. And I just, I care about you enough. You've been one of my clients. What is yeah. it to, to me? 10 bucks, yeah. right? Yeah, to just exactly. wrap that and and you're just giving the appreciate you know like hey i appreciate his client you've been with me forever and i think it's a great just thing to do honestly oh yeah definitely it like sets you apart for sure yeah 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 definitely james you got anything you want to add uh yeah so kind of <laughs> piggy, piggyback off of that just a little bit um yeah. it, it starts with a phone call right so uh when you're talking to a person you're talking to that client that potential client uh, I'm, I'm pretty talkative if, if, if I'm talking to a new customer or if I know you, otherwise I'm kind of reserved, but, uh, you know, most of the time, like I'll talk to a customer and, and fill, fill them out or whatever, and talk about where they're from and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk shop for a little bit or whatever the case may be and, uh, kind of figure out what they're into, what they like. And I try to incorporate that somehow into the landscaping that I do. Um, one of the big things I do here in Nashville and, and I know some guys do it, but not all guys do it. Uh, it was just how I learned. Um, but when, when I do mulch, like I suggest mulch based on the color of your shutters or based on the color of your roof. Oh. And some people don't think about that. You know what I mean? It should be a contrast like, for sure. Yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I want, or the color of the house itself, you know what I mean? And so I suggest that, or I'm very, very big on plants. And, and when I do curb appeal, I always joke with people. They're like, well, James, what do you recommend? 
well, I'm low maintenance or no maintenance. Like that's what I'm putting in the ground. And, uh, cause everybody's time has been poured and everybody's time, you know, value, you know, they, they don't have time to water plants every day, you know, and, and uh, to get them established. And so I always try to pick stuff that's good for middle Tennessee stuff. That's low maintenance to no maintenance. And, uh, that's honestly how I've done a lot of my installs. And we, we joke about it. Cause my uncle, uh, you know, we'll be driving around or whatever, you know, after a job and he'll be like, Oh, no, that was James's house. You know, you can tell by the bush selection, right? You know, because it's gold mops and, and Japanese hollies or boxwoods. It's just very simple, you know, modern looking. And, and I like some of the no maintenance kind of guy. So uh, anytime I do Kerberville, man, I, I try to try to figure out what the customer's into a little bit. And uh, then, you know, maybe surprise them at the end. You can do a little something extra. Um, you know, say maybe edging the beds wasn't a part of it. Maybe just taking the time out to do that. Something simple. But it goes a long way, and uh, and in building a lifetime with that customer, you know what I mean. And uh, uh, for instance, the uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Are you selling yourself short just a little bit by just putting low maintenance shrubs in there, where you could offer the first trim for free within the next three months, to where you're actually going ahead and maintaining that property? Although you may not want to do that, but you could have that sub that you could possibly bake 10, 15 percent off of that's going to come back behind and offer that you know, on a monthly basis. <laughs> Look here, baby. You're looking at the thug, the owner. The owner. I'm all it's, it's me and, and two guys, we're doing all that. I mean, I am too, though. That's what I'm right. saying is but I'll offer that. If they're going, like, hey, I got yeah. this, but I want you to see I'm how beautiful they're going to be. I'm going to give you the low maintenance, you know, here's your ground cover kind of thing to where I could go ahead and, and, and say, listen, I want you to be a, a – you know, a customer mine for a very long time. So I'm going to offer you in three months, I'm going to come and trim that through. And then here's what I would normally do, which I do remove weed removal bi-monthly. So you're upselling that entire thing. So where you're going to be maintaining that property for an entire year well, by yourself see, and your buddy. <laughs> yeah. I guess most of my, most of my maintenance customers, uh, and I, I may still be old school on it. Like I, I don't have any kind of contract stuff in place or anything. <clears throat> It's a handshake. It's a text. Hey, Verbal man. is a legal binding contract. Yeah, well, there's nothing I mean, wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, so I had some people kind of question that, and they're like, you know, I'm your customers. I'm like, no, man, I've been having some of them I've had for, you know, 10 years, you know. like yeah. Yeah. Um, So, like, you know, they know every year we're going to do mulch. They know every year we're going to trim hedges three times a year. And, and and nine times out of 10, they text me, and I'm okay with it. Right. I'll fit it in my right. schedule. Unless it's my regular, I don't have any weekly yards, so all my stuff is bi-weekly. So everything I do is, is is pretty much dependent on if I'm at that property or not that day. Like if I notice the bushes need to be trimmed, I may just do it. And I'll say, hey, I took care of that for right. you. Oh, James, appreciate it. You know, um, but I, I really, I, I've, I've never, uh, I, I'm not a, I'm kind of nervous on upselling if, if that's a thing. Like I would rather just let my work speak for itself if that, you know. And then I, I, I'm so serious. Like, I don't know why it works, but God just blesses me to get something else. Like I may do a job for cheaper on the front end and then I'll get three more jobs from that same person down the road. It just, how I've done business and it's worked great for me. Um, I had a customer I lost actually recently been cutting his yard for on my street for probably nine years, man. Uh, since that, since a push mowing his yard. So we're talking way, way back when. And, uh, 1925. The, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty old. You were 20 years old. Oh, wait, right? there's more. <laughs> well, well, like he told me, so he said, he said, James, um, he said, you know, I, I really wish you would, uh, you know, I, you, you've been cutting my yard for, for X amount of time. You know, he said, how come you don't tell me about all the things that I need done around my property? <laughs> And I, and it, uh, I was like, well, I'll be honest with you. I got 75 other customers. Like I'm not, I'm not looking at nitpicking everybody's property. You know what I mean? That's just not what I do. Um, I do that though. Well, yeah, that, I mean, I do. I mean, I get you, but I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't do that. And uh, I expect you as the customer, if it's your house, you're taking care of it. That should be something you should want to take care of. If you don't, I don't care. You're paying me to cut the grass, cut the grass. That's what I'll do. And right. if you want extra. So if you see a sprinkler head that's not popping up or you realize that it's been broken, do you bring that to their attention and you say, hey, I've got a, you know, a sprinkler guy you can contact or you just run over it? I mean, just like ignore it. Sorry, not run over it because you've already done that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't ignore it. I mean, that's, 
I'm pretty sure it, James is probably like me. We both do that <laughs> stuff. So it's like you're going to go knock on the door and say, hey, I can do this sprinkler for you right now. I mean, I'm not subbing that out either. Well, no, and I can, I can, I can, I can change the small things. Yes. And, I, and I'll take a photo and I'll be like, hey, did you realize that this was X, Y, and Z? And they're like, no, I didn't. And I'm like, okay. Do you want me to change it? Like out. Topo, buddy. No, I'm not, no. <laughs> no, just keep going. Just keep changing. Oh, yeah. go. You know, talk, <laughs> talking about customization, just for to, to your point, Scott, a bit earlier. And just you need some fence armor around this. Yeah, has got something for us. Wait, let me let me get some more props. <laughs> <laughs> He's got something else. That's no. awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. That's hilarious. We've got props everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So here, Prototype here's for the uh, pop-up sprinklers. <laughs> oh. Nothing to do with a sprinkler, but this is a, this is a post cap. Yep. Oh. And, you know, if you've Somebody asked it earlier, actually. <laughs> yeah, if you have a post cap um, that, you know, your ordinary post cap without a finial, these, these screw off. So you, you, you can have just a standard post cap, but you can put on some really beautiful looking post caps and and you know for you jay that's 100 percent tennessee zinc yeah absolutely they're heavy um again not made in china uh and what's unique about this well you can't see it because it's protected here but what's under here is a stainless steel patented claw now for those of you who in in the fencing business if i if i said you had a four by four post you guys know what a four by four typically measures? Three and a half by three and a half. Yeah. But you, it, it could be three and a half. It could be three and five eighths. It could be three and seven eighths. It could be three and three quarters. It could be four and an eighth. Here's the claw if you wanted to see it. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Nice. That, that claw, that, that cap will fit any four by four ever made. You don't have to measure it. It just goes on and then locks in, and then you, you can use any of our beautiful finials. We have six of them. Fleur de Lee, Ball Top Quad, something a little more gothic. And then, of course, you can use our acorn, and on game day, you can put in a flag. So, you know, that's that, you can just do it on the gates. I think that is so awesome. Like, I am, I am totally going to do this is that to me because yeah. i don't do the yard mowing and i don't care about the post necessarily but the yeah. top of it from a curb appeal standpoint that is awesome yeah they they really they really look nice and we have it for for six by six too but you know that's a real easy upsell and again it's all american you don't have nothing comes offshore so that's another you know you're a premium company with a premium product I'm sitting there for a while though i think you know <laughs> i i think it yeah, they'll be they'll be on there, and then you know they can you can un unfasten them and put on a new one, right? You put on a new. How one. do you unfasten? How do you? I mean, what are you going to do with the flathead screwdriver? I mean, where are we going? Oh, with that? You, the, oh the tops. But I'm saying, so Scott, you're showing me the bottom of that. No, that's, that's the top. That's the top. It's just so screw. show me the bottom though. How do you actually, if you choose not to have that on the top, you just oh it, oh if you, it off? To, if you wanted to take it off. So if you want to take it off, you just take a dime, unscrew the common head at the top, and then the cap comes off. Okay, so it releases the pressure that's you, good on the you got it. I got you. You got it. And then I'm going to sub that out. You, you can take that with you. Um, so anyway, to, to your point for customization, I think it's always good if you're looking, and I think that's what you were saying, Nicole, always watching the customer's property, always seeing opportunities to um, qualify a different trade or a different subset of trades that may be able to come in. Well, uh, and the reason I do that is because if I don't get a percentage off of the tree guy coming in, he is going to recommend me to the next five clients whenever they need bed work done or a huge cleanup. So I think that there's a huge trade off there if I'm going to be the contractor over the sprinkler guy and whatever, then I'll add the percentage on that. But if not, I know at the very end of the day that these people are going to recommend me because of the job that I do just as, just as well as I would recommend them for the very good job that they do as well. So I think that that's just the way to do business. And I just, I, and I'm not sorry, but I'm, I'm just, I am there to make their property 
look amazing. And I've always said this, I think on every video I've been on is if they haven't, if they, if they go at the end of the day and they drive by and go, what happened? Like, did anybody, was anybody here? Or I could have done that. If they can't tell I've been on their property, then there's no reason to have me come there and do anything at all. But I'm there to solve a problem. And it's the entire yard from, from curb to really the back fence. <laughs> and now yeah. these top caps, I'm so excited. <laughs> now, let me ask you this, just for curiosity to all of you, when you're doing the work on the property, do you put a sign in the lawn while you're doing the work and then take the sign with you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Or not. I I'll mean, that's not right it's thing. Stolen, but I'll leave them. Yeah. You, are you playing with me or you do? No. no I, yeah. I put mine in. <laughs> they both do. I don't. Yeah. Oh, you don't? Okay. They I think that's a great idea while you're doing sides, the work. So. I'm like six to eight, eight weeks out. Like, I, I'm just so thankful for the business that I have. And I mean, you know, I but, think my yeah. thing is just before and after photos. I mean, if, if they want to see what I do, the, here's what I do. But right. you know, Nicole, even, uh, even me in six to eight weeks out, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're two months out right now and we're actually right. booked into December and, and I'm excited, Are you excited about that. Yeah, yeah. And we still put the sign out there because you know, everybody in that neighborhood that pulls through that yard, sees that yard, sees that work is going to say, even if your sign's not there, they're going to ask that neighbor, but and I they're agree gonna with that that sign and they're going to see your number. And they're gonna no, I agree me. with that a thousand percent. So if I was trying to build my business, it's, and here's why, right. I'm a one person show. So when I do bids, I have to understand that my contractors may not show up. So I have right. to be able to unload the mulch and I have to unload the stone by myself. In saying that, if you're trying to build your business, my I mean, I put my sign out there a thousand percent. I just, I just don't have to do that. If I'm eight weeks out, then it's time for me to raise my price. Correct. Like five dollars an hour. <laughs> that's how I gauge that, right? You know, okay, maybe right. a dollar. Fifteen, yeah. Well, I, I, I think earlier you, you said you were paying somebody five dollars an hour, and then oh no, no it's we'll seven. Ten dollars an hour. Is, is, I don't even know what minimum wage. I have been self-employed since I was nineteen, so I don't even know what minimum wage is at this point. All I know is McDonald's workers want to make fifteen dollars an hour, and they can just come work for me and shovel dirt, right. and, and we'd be good. It'd be but just that, a great that's, situation. That's, right. that's work. <laughs> I have another question. Am I allowed to ask questions? Yes, yes, you can ask me questions. <laughs> Sorry, Scott. I no, no. I mean, I'm letting everybody ask questions. Eventually, <laughs> we'll get to the winner, though. I mean, I I do. Have oh my winners, gosh, I forgot. So, I'm winning. I mean, we can get to that at any point, but you know, we're gonna keep. We'll we'll go. We'll go ahead and ask your question now. Go ahead. I want to ask the, the question because ultimately, you know, as if you go to obviously if you go to our website obviously you'll see that we've grown certainly our product line and it's all about uh protecting people's property protecting their investment whether that's with fence armor or or post saver or any of our products right uh stain from stain and seal and all of it is about exactly that now one of the products we're looking at and this is coming to the question is chain link so on a, on a property that has chain link, how do you weed whack uh, around the bottom of that mesh or the, the fabric, I should say? Oh my gosh. It's, you just weed whip it. I mean, I, I mean, it's just, you just weed whip it. I, there's nothing that you can do about it. Um, I, Aren't I feel you like going through a ton of string though in the process of that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I feel our yeah. hardest that we go through is, is chain link. Um, but like I said before, and a lot in our area is split rail with chicken wire. So weed whip just rips through that, that chicken wire. Um, and there's nothing you can do against it. Um, but chain link, I'm, we go through a lot when we go through the chain link, you know, cause I don't want that one little piece of grass sticking up in between <laughs> oh there. My. And, yeah. and, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm not getting out there with scissors. No, there's no way. I mean, I don't even cut my hair. So I don't think I'm going to go out the there and cut it with scissors. Could you yeah. get that? Yeah. So but, do you charge more? So if, if somebody has a chain link, whatever, 100 feet of chain link around the side, do you, is there an upsell on a, a cost for that? No, no. It's the same. No. If, if the guy next door has the same amount of property and I charge the same amount as I do for the guy that has the chain link as the guy that doesn't with the same square footage. 
even though I you're using more, filament. even though you're using more filament. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Because that guy that doesn't have that, I don't use that much filament. So, you know, usually I can go a whole a whole day probably on probably one to two fills of, of filament on my weed whip. So, I mean, and that's, you know, my hardest, like I said, my hardest is just going around, you know, everything that needs to go around. And that's the hardest is the chain links. And that's, you can't, there's yeah. nothing you can do about it. Well, let me, let me, let me present something to you. And again, we're, we're looking at a couple of different products and I want to okay. share this with you as landscapers. So there's two, two different styles of products. And I think there's, they belong in two different areas and we're toying with them. In fact, that's what Stephanie, Stephanie, Stephanie and I were filming together the other day. One of them is effectively a 10 inch wide sheet of plastic that lies underneath the fabric between the posts. Okay. And it locks into the posts. And now, of course, what that does is the grass doesn't grow. You have that dead patch, as it were. It's, it's black plastic that lives there. And now you can drive over it with your lawnmower, but you'll never get grass living there. And that's one idea. The other idea is actually a channel that lives along the bottom of the fabric. And kind of like, like a landscape... Um, um edging edging exactly yeah but it's it's a channel that lives under there okay what what are you what are you guys thoughts about something like that <laughs> i see nicole has a very strange look <laughs> on her face i don't know i do that because i don't know how many uh, i'm gonna call them volunteer trees of course my tree guy is like that's really not a tree but a sapling that right. is coming in between the fence and and that chain link and it's been wrapped around i'm just I, the trench if I'm coming in there as a landscaper going, okay, I want to avoid this problem. I'm going to take it out. We're going to treat it with a chemical. I'm going to have my chemical guy come in because that's my sub. And, and he's going to treat this. The, the piece, the piece where I could just lay it underneath there and go, okay, here's where we're going to protect this. Because otherwise you're going to have to treat this fence line. I don't even know how many times, probably three times. Right. It, rather than me, I cannot physically dig underneath there. I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> yeah i don't want to dig the trench with my little spade yeah. to get whatever you're saying which would be kind of a u-shaped something right underneath well, there well, the the if it's if it's a new fence right you're yeah you're, but we're talking about people that <clears throat> no. if it's an old fence it's been there for 17 <laughs> years and you've got a piece. all of this grass growing through the the the, the and uh, i deal with it all the time i really do if you if Forget about it. It's just too much work. Forget Please. about it. Forget <laughs> it. Forget it. It's that is a, a labor of love that somebody has got it. No, no, no. But that's no. what I do. And so I would so be able to sell a product. You know what I'm saying? If I'm doing a clear out and I'm going, listen, in next year or two years, when you finally call me back, it's going to look the same. But I have this product, which is a thin piece of whatever you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Rubber. Rubber. Rather than me digging it in, I would I would do that. Oh, if you were going to do that work, absolutely, because you could yeah. charge. I mean that Stephanie and I have gone through this. <laughs> that's that's a whole ton of work. You should see Stephanie with a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> what? Well, that, that, was, that was hysterical. How do you? I I bet with holding the phone, it probably was kind of hard, right? <laughs> Keep throwing worms at me. It's not. Like <laughs> Here, have a worm. <laughs> Um, but as a fence builder, which I know neither of you are, right? So yeah. I would have, I think that that would be a, a thing where I would get a hold of my fence guy and I'd say, listen, could you really try to promote this? Because as they're getting their fence installed, you really need to put this product down. And right. if you're not, you should offer it because I deal with this all the time. And if they need to have, a, you know, a, me to say, for me to come in here and clear this out, it's going to be, you know, $300 a year or whatever it is to clear. I'm telling <clears throat> not only the, the grass, it's those volunteer sapling tree things that are coming up and it's horrible to yeah. cut those out. Well, I, I'm, yeah, I'm glad you, 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 you agree. I think they're, they're interesting products. Both of them have a unique situation. I think the one that <clears throat> lives at the bottom of the fabric is a channel. So it actually 
lives at the bottom of the channel would be good for uneven elevations because if you just have a, a flat piece of rubber on the ground and you have an uneven elevation it might be difficult to to manage that terrain scenario and then if you have the channel under the fabric the grass will still grow up but it won't be able to get in between the fabric you can just um trim to the the plastic edging as it were anyway we're, we're toying with these <clears throat> these thoughts and I, I what what better group of people to talk to than than you guys we all get 10 percent of the sales <laughs> I just she's, text. She's quite the negotiator, isn't she? Right. Yeah. You just right. send it to me, Al, and I'll put it underneath a fence, and we'll be good. I don't need the ten percent. Yeah. yeah. On that one. Well, we'll have to do some videos on that. Uh, That's it. That's all. Anyway. I don't. I don't care. Yeah. I, I, okay. Can I ask a question on that? So yeah. you're using it on chain link. Have you used it on like the chicken wire? Like we use it. Use chicken wire. Like I said, on the split rail. Would that protect the chicken wire then, or how would that work? Because you're saying it goes from post to post, correct? Yeah. So on on if you're using chicken wire, are they steel posts between? No, we use wood wood posts. Okay, so, so it, it could be either. I mean, <clears throat> basically, um, you probably let me run and get it. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Steph. I'm sorry. He's very entertained. That is awesome. Yeah. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but wait. No, he's leaving. Oh, is, he, no is he gonna do that at GIE? Hold on, let me go back. Hold oh, on. you can <laughs> see him. He was there, yes. Yes, he was. We're logging in like <laughs> eight boxes of stuff. We gotta have everything. Right. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> so if there where's the post? If the post is here, correct. That fits in the post, and you can cut that out to a square or whatever you want. Yeah. And that lives flat on the ground. Okay. And now you don't have any grass growing up. So you can have chicken wire, you can have anything you want. Right. That would so that definitely protect that. from ever having a weed whip along that chicken wire. Exactly. That, that just saved me about five seconds per, per post. So, so I'm then good with it. That, that would do a great job with it. And it's all recycled plastic. And then there's this guy. That's the one that lives As a under the fabric. Okay. I see that. Right, and that that stays there. You see those those drain holes at the bottom. You see oh, the channel. Nice. Yeah. There oh, that's cool. Up. So that that's so that obviously, you know, the fence in between it. But then we we take a spring, stainless steel spring that locks in here, and then ties up on the fabric, and it holds it up, kind of like a like a garter. Mm. See, now that would definitely work on a uh, chicken wire fence. Yeah. That, yeah. So there, there's two two different applications. This one I think would really work work well for uneven terrain, and the other one would work well on, on a flat street. Yeah. But uh, I get I've had comments about chain link guys, and I just thought you know you're you're the ones to ask. And as we look in for new products for the spring, what what a good place to to come to to talk about it. Yeah, definitely. I mean that's okay. that's definitely good. I'm I'm all for it, definitely. Well, you know, it's it's again one of those things that you don't think about, but if it seems like all of you have challenges around chain link fences and going through a lot of filament. Mm -hmm. Definitely, so, I go, I mean, a lot of filament, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure James is with me right there. I mean, I go through a lot a year, so it would save me a lot. Man, so. I this is my, I'm just my digging, third. so I don't do filament anything. Yeah. How many pounds? Five? Yeah, my third five-pound spool. You know the big spools. I've, I'm on my right, third yeah. one this year. Um, yeah. I think I've, that's just employed, though, honestly. I mean, but you know that's a, a, a perishable expense, right? Like, we know we're going to go oh, yeah. through trimmer line. This is what it is. Um, there's oh, yeah. nothing you can do about chain link. I found kind of – some on overgrown chain link, you can edge it. You know, I found kind of flip the trimmer up and edge it down. It, it looks okay. Right. But like Scott was saying, there'll be like one random blade of grass, and that's so stressful. <laughs> you know, yes. you know. Yeah. My solution it it, it bothers me. Yeah. yeah it, take the chain link fence down. That's my solution. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So cost wise, if I was to hire my chemical guy to go spray that fence line compared to what you have, I mean, where are you at on that? And what is the, I mean, I know this is a brand new thing, but cost wise, what, where are you looking well, for well, five foot run or where are you at? And again, he, here's where, where I have to sell you value. Yeah. Because certainly your chemical guy is poisoning the earth. Heaven forbid. Right. He's using <laughs> vinegar water. and water. I mean, I don't even understand. <laughs> I just know I'm not going to do it. <laughs> that, that's what they call it. Vinegar and water. I thought it was vinegar and water, huh? Something called, vinegar, uh, I mean, I, doesn't that solve everything? I don't know. Just Apple cider, out. take it every day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, it. it's fine. We don't poison the earth and we use recycled plastic. But to your point, it probably works out to about three dollars a linear foot. Okay, that's not that bad. would be that would be cool. the retail. Right. So I think but, you're cheaper than my chemical guy. Seriously, I mean, or any chemical man that's okay. thirty-five to forty-five to spray fence line and actually would be using horrible chemicals like vinegar to kill <laughs> that line. <laughs> yeah, you know, for twelve months. So Scott and, doesn't have to come in there with his weed whacker to. Right. That's good to know, and and you know what, at least. You don't ever have to come back. That's a one-time shot. It's there. Right. And now it's covered for a lifetime. Uh, you've taken plastic out of the landfill. Um, you haven't used any chemicals. Uh, no small children will be damaged. And it doesn't look ugly because there's nothing worse. And I've seen this. We have we had a condo guy from Arizona. <clears throat> you should. He sent us pictures, and it looked like at each post was death. It was like a nuclear disaster site. And they were taking Roundup and uh, spraying it around every post. And this is a this is a, yeah. a three rail, forty eight inch high white vinyl fence, and death, 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 death. death. Um, because they didn't want to weed whack the bottom of those posts. Right. So they they bought. So fence does it melt the bottom? It has to melt the bottom of that post, basically. Well, is that what you're telling me? Is which no, what I'm saying is the grass, like I don't know. The grass is totally dead. It's certainly not great for the vinyl. A death. Yeah. Okay, not death to the post because I didn't no. know whether yeah. or not it compromises the plastic. Yeah. Well, you know, there, there's a titanium nitrite coating, which is UV coating around that that uh, PVC post. I don't okay. know if it protects uh, for the chemicals, but ultimately what I'm referring to is the dead grass and earth around it, that under this beautiful property with this magnificent fence, to see these pieces of death, and, and they all hated it, and they found the product, and they put it on, and now, of course, they can let the grass grow right up to the post, and it looks beautiful again. And that and makes complete sense yeah, as far as curb appeal, for sure. But right. to have that grass right there where you guys can just go up there and use your, you know, weed right. eater, that's what we call yeah. them in Oklahoma, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. to take Lacker. care of the grass. So that's cool. Yeah. What'd you say? Weed whacker. Like, I've yeah. never heard that. Or even trimmer. Like, I'm thinking, y'all talking about hedge trimmers? Because yeah, that's, that's not what you're talking about. Or here's an interesting no. tidbit. Weed eater. <laughs> an interesting tidbit for you. You can't use the word weed whacker on Amazon. Yes, I know that. I can't imagine why. <laughs> because weed apparently has become an inappropriate word. <laughs> right. So if you use weed whacker as one phrase, or trimmer or strimmer or weed eater, they have to be in a continuous word. You can't use them as separate words. Nice. Where, where have we come, eh? Yeah. I have. <laughs> Everything's changing. Everything's changing. Good to know. It's not the second word that they're concerned about. It's just the no. weed part. I don't right. think, is whacker a bad word on Amazon? I haven't. I, you know, I I'm going to Google that or look. I don't know. Stephanie was gonna pull up all kinds of stuff on there. <laughs> She's a social media girl. You're a band. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> thank you, Al, for all that information there. <laughs> Uh, some people are now banned from Amazon, <laughs> uh, but uh, that I can help. So, <laughs> Do not look up those words, okay? <laughs> uh, and please do not yeah, use Cheerios on your floor. If you it's not your pee head. on the post. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. not pee on the post. Uh. Um, <laughs> but this all has been about curb appeal this today. <laughs> so we want to thank Al. Um, Al, uh, Fence Armor, 
donated some money, $500 to, to, you know, customize some shirts for everybody. So the, their curb appeal will stand out. So we have a winner in the giveaway uh, for the $500 worth of shirts. And the winner is Calmer's Lawn Care. Uh, Chris Calmer, uh, he will be at GIE. So hopefully if you guys see him, congratulate him. And uh, thank you for entering. Thank you all for entering. Um, this was a great giveaway. Thank you for to Al and everybody at Fence Armor for doing it. And for Infinite 13 is going to be the one doing the shirts. So they will be in contact with you hopefully within the next couple hours. And, you know, from what I have heard from them, um, they have something special too for everybody. Um, I, they were supposed to be on here. I don't know if they're still on here or not. Um, but if not, they had let me know that if you go to infinite13designs.com, now as today, if you're on YouTube today, you can get 15% off using the code EMB Fence Armor. And you will get 15% off any order of customized shirts if you guys need any shirts or any apparel. But we want to also thank Al because he's the one, the big winner here. He gave everything to everybody. So thank you, Al, for everything you've done. You've gave us tons of props to look at all day today. <laughs> I'm glad. It was wonderful. So, I, I enjoyed this conversations. Um, I think we could keep going on for hours and on hours. Um, but I don't know. Al might not have enough products in the backyard. Back <laughs> from there, so. Well, I, I got tons of stuff to share with you, but I, we've, we've probably drawn this long enough, and it's uh, it's been a real uh, a real treat to be with you guys. I, I hope I can come back again one day. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you, Al. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, James. Thank you, Nicole, for all being here. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching it. Um, if you, like I said, if you're not a pro. Go on right now to echomeansbusiness.com. Sign up to be a pro. You can get 15% off or more. Who knows what kind of percent you can get off with any of the pro rewards that you sign up for. But you can go over. Al's got some great products there at his, his website. And you can get your discount code there, too, for that. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us tonight. Uh, special thanks to all our panelists. They're they're just a, thank you, a handful. Thank you, Thank you. If anybody um, just yeah. just said by the way, Scott, if anybody wants one of our tags or stickers or anything like that, uh, we'd be happy to send them to the to them. Uh, uh, just email you or us, and we'll be happy to send you a tag or uh, stickers from from our uh, products. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So you all heard it. If you want a fence armor sticker, email fence armor or contact me because I will help make sure that it goes through too. So. Um, Mark your calendars. Our next pro is going to be pro networking series is in two weeks. Um, so right after GIE, the week after GIE, hope to see everybody at GIE. I know there's going to be a lot of people at GIE. I know we're going to miss Fence Armor being at GIE this year. So, um, but I want to thank them for being on tonight. Definitely. They are a big, huge help. Um, enough stuff to, uh, you know, make that curve appeal out a hundred percent. 100%. So uh, if you ain't, remember, you can watch this recording again on the pro networking sessions on the EMB community or listen to it on the EMB podcast. Visit Echo Means Business now and register for a free access and great contest content and connections with any of your UAG members that are here. James, Nicole, me, myself, and anybody else. You can even contact Stephanie. She hasn't talked much today. She might want to talk to you. So <laughs> You can contact her and she'll help you out. Okay. So uh Al can tell you lots of stories too. Okay. But contact Stephanie first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I built her. <laughs> but thanks everybody for joining us. Uh hope to see you guys at GIE. Hope to see you guys in two weeks at the next session that we're gonna have. Uh have a good night, guys. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Okay. Thanks Scott, Jay, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye. Cheers.